Hi guys, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through Chapter 3.2, In Search of an Octet, Part 1, Ion Formation. When an atom gains an electron, to complete the octet in its valence shell, it becomes isoelectric with its nearest noble gas. Keep in mind, the nearest noble gas can be in front of it, or it could be behind it, depending. Okay, An ion is more stable than an atom because it has a satisfied octet rule. That's very important, guys. Satisfying the octet rule is kind of the whole point of chemistry. Ion for, ions form when atoms lose electrons, lose electrons, become positively charged, and are called cations. So now, there are ions. Ions are charged particles. From ions, we get cations, which are positive, and we get anions, which are negative. Okay, now how do people remember this? Well, there's a couple of ways. Notice how in the word cation there is a T, and the positive charge symbol kind of resembles a T. So that's how one, some people remember it. Another way is to think of a cation. Well, cats have paws. Cats have paws. So cations are positive. Posit get it? That's <laughs> pretty clever. <laughs> I, like my, I like my jokes. You may not. <laughs> so that's how people remember it, and that's how it works. Atoms will either gain or lose electrons to, to satisfy the octet rule. And cations are the positively charged versions of that. Anions are the negatively charged versions of it. Cations are atoms that lose electrons. Anions are atoms that gain electrons. And that's kind of how it works. Now, an ion is represented with an ionic formula. For example, sodium is written with a plus charged superscript it to the right. That is sodium ion. Sodium atom would not have the plus charge. Calcium has a two plus charge. Notice how there's a two plus written there. That's calcium ion. To write negative charges for anion, simply write the anion superscript it to the right. Again, negative two superscript it to the right. And that's how it works. That's how you represent an ion. So for example, if I wanted to do bromine as an ion, there you go. Um, lithium as an ion, there you go. Magnesium as an ion. Um, oxygen as an ion, there, there's how you would do it. Just write the negative two there or the positive two, whatever number it needs. And we'll figure out in a minute how to decide what number it needs, okay? Well, that's how you write ionic formulas. Now, you try it. Now, this is just a little uh, question for us to try together. Um, we'll work through it together because I think you need a little more um, information on how to solve this kind of problem. It's very easy. So, first of all, let's draw the dot symbol for calcium. C-A. And chlorine is C-L. Calcium's in group 2, has two valence electrons. Chlorine is in group 7, has 7 valence electrons. The nearest noble gas to calcium. Well, let me look at my periodic table on my wall here. The nearest noble gas to calcium is argon. Nearest noble gas to chlorine would be also argon. So it's argon for both. Now, remember we said that the atoms will either gain or lose electrons to look have the same kind of electron arrangement as their nearest noble gas. So let's take a look at argon's configuration. Argon would be 288, okay? 2, comma, 8, comma, 8. That's argon, and there's the octet for argon. Remember we said that all atoms want to have the same electrons as their noble gas. Calcium, however, calcium is 2, comma, 8, comma, 8, comma, 2. Calcium has two valence electrons 
That's not an octet. Chlorine is 2,8,7. That's also not an octet. So it seems like we have some work to do. In order to look like calcium, uh, pardon me, uh, argon, calcium has to do some work here. Remember, we said it was going to either gain or lose electrons to look like its nearest noble gas. Well, the nearest noble gas to calcium is argon. Argon does not have these two electrons right here. It doesn't have them. They're just not there. So calcium wants to lose those two electrons. Why? To look just like argon in terms of electrons, to be isoelectric to argon. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. Argon has eight at, that, at the same location. So chlorine will want to gain one electron. And calcium wants to lose, actually, let's go back here, two electrons. Oops, because my face got in the way there. Let me change that a little bit. Go back just a little bit here. Lose two electrons, gain one, oops, electron, okay? So calcium will want to lose electrons to have the same noble gas configuration as argon. Chlorine wants to gain one electron to have the same noble gas configuration as argon. So that's what would happen here, okay? Now, uh, let me think here. Okay. Oops. Uh, sorry, guys. I messed that up a little bit. There we go. Now, if you look at this table, you can see the relative charges of all the popular, let's say, uh, atoms or ions. Notice how everything in group one has a plus one charge. Everybody in group two has a plus two charge. Aluminum is plus 3. Everybody in group 17 is negative 1. Everybody in eight and 16 is negative 2. And negative 3. Now, I've been saying everybody. What I should have been saying is nonmetals. Nonmetals in group 17 are negative 1. Nonmetals in group 16 are negative 2. Nonmetals in group 15 are negative 3. Okay? Now... Here's one way to remember this, and I'll show you a, a more worked out way. But let me show you a quick and easy way to remember this. Whenever you're here, 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 or here, and I want you just to count squares to get to the noble gas. How many, how many jumps do you have to make? So if you're here, you jump one spot to get to the noble gas. If you're here, you jump one spot, one spot, one spot to get to the noble gas. That's gaining one electron. So that's negative or one negative, okay? Because going to the right, you're gaining electrons. Going to the right, you're gaining, okay? So if you're jumping to the right towards the nearest noble gas, that's a gain of electrons, okay? If you're gaining electrons, you are negative. Sorry, guys, my light, I don't know why they... It really doesn't want to turn on today. There we go. Okay, so let's go back and let's look at group 16. So here, here, and here. In order to get to the nearest noble gas, which is over here, I have to jump once, twice. Once, twice. Once, twice. Okay? In order to get to the nearest noble gas, if I'm in group 16, I have to make two jumps to get to the noble gas. So that's the... Ah, sometimes it's just not worth doing these things, guys. All right. Frustrating day. There we go. There we go. There we go. So these, everybody, every nonmetal in group 2 must gain two electrons in order to look like their nearest noble gas. Now let's look at group 13, or sorry, 15. So if we're here and here, one, 
two, three. One, two, three jumps to look like our nearest noble gas. So they will gain three electrons or become three negative. Okay? That's how this is kind of working. This is how you can kind of use the periodic table to predict uh, charge on an atom, atom if it becomes an ion. Now let's take a look at the other side. Let's take a look at the metal side. Let's take a look at the ones that become cations. Okay? Let's just back all this stuff out of there. Now, let's say we're here, 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 or here. We're all in group one. Now, the nearest noble gas to lithium is not here. It's here. Okay? Lithium will not come here. Lithium will only go here. All right? Now, why is that? Because lithium has to just jump backwards one to be here. And that's why lithium only wants to lose one valence electron. So let's take a look at that real quick. Helium, which is right here, helium has the electron uh, orientation or arrangement of two. That's it, just two. Lithium is two, one. Now remember, we said the octet rule really was just a rule about filling valence shells. Okay, uh, it's usually eight, but for helium it's two. So lithium wants to get rid of that one electron. So it wants to get rid of that one electron to look just like helium in terms of electrons. So lithium wants to lose one electron. Now what if we took a little more complicated example, say sodium. Sodium is just below uh, lithium. So sodium will be... 2, comma, 8, comma, 1. Its nearest noble gas is neon, which is 2, comma, 8. So we have a very similar situation that we had for lithium. Its nearest noble gas is behind it. So it can, excuse me, it wants to look just like neon in terms of electrons. To be isoelectric to neon, sodium has to lose one electron. If it loses a negative charge, it becomes positive, okay? So everybody in group one is positive one if they're ions. Group two is positive two. Now let's take a look at that. Let's say we had um, magnesium. Magnesium is two comma eight comma two. It wants to look like neon, which is two comma eight. Well, there's the two valence electrons on magnesium, two more than, magne than neon has. So magnesium wants to drop two electrons. Everybody in group two wants to drop two electrons to look just like the nearest noble gas, which in the, ter in the case of group two is behind them, okay? The noble gases are here, remember? Noble gases are here. So the closest square to lithium is not this one. It's this one. The closest square to sodium is not this one. It's, in fact, that one. Okay? Metals go backwards. Metals lose electrons. Okay? This is how you can figure it out. This is how you can figure out the charge on the metal ion. Now, let's take a look at this uh, slide. In this slide, we talk about predicting charge on a main group ion. That's group 1, 2, 13 through, through uh, 17, essentially. Predicting the charge, metals form cations. Metals always form cations. Okay, metals lose electrons. Nonmetals gain electrons, and I showed you why on the periodic table. They want to gain electrons to get just like their nearest noble gas, which is, which is three or less squares away. Metals want to lose electrons because they want to look like their nearest noble gas. Now, some transition metals do indeed have charges. In fact, they all can form charges. But we don't worry about that in this class because figuring out that charge is a little bit beyond what we need to do. Just know that they can form numerous charges. Where group 1 metals, group 2 metals, and aluminum, it's a charge is certain. If it's going to form a charge, we know it has to be this charge. Transition metals aren't like that. They can, they, a lot of them can form numerous charges. So we're just going to kind of just say that and then let it, let it sit. Now there's also these things called polyatomic ions. Now polyatomic ions are 
groups of nonmetals that are bonded together to give an overall charge. Okay? There's numerous examples of this. I'll just give you one right now. OH minus, that's called hydroxide. And maybe one you also heard of, NH4 plus, that's called ammonium. Oops. There we go. Ammonium. Those are two very common polyatomic ions. Notice they're both made of nonmetals. Nonmetals, nonmetals. They're very common, but they're polyatomic ions in that they're a group of nonmetal atoms that are bonded together, giving an overall charge to a to an ion. Okay. Whereas these other ones we're talking about, the uh, the ones that you can read off the periodic table, those are not polyatomic. Sometimes they're called they're called monoatomic ions. Uh, I've also heard them called atomic ions. That's a little not something I usually say. I usually say monoatomic. All right. What is the ionic formula for the following? So bust out your periodic table and try to do this question without me. I know it says example, but I've, I've kind of shown you how to use a periodic table to figure this out. So go ahead and grab your uh, periodic table. Try to answer these questions and uh, pause the video if you need a little more time and then come on back when you're done. All right, guys, welcome back. Well, let's talk about lithium. Lithium, we talked about already. Lithium is positive one. It's in group one. All group one metals are plus one. Magnesium, we talked about magnesium already as well. That's plus two. Oxygen is negative two. Bromine will be negative. Uh, sorry about that. I kind of screwed up a little bit there. There we go. Two plus, that's better. Oxygen is 2 minus, and bromine is minus. Now, how did I know that? Well, let's go over oxygen. Oxygen has electrons that look like this, 2, comma, 6. Nearest noble gas is neon. Neon is 2, comma, 8. So in order for oxygen to have 8 valence electrons there, it has to gain 2 electrons. It has to gain 2 negative charges in order to have a filled octet rule. So that means oxygen must be too negative if it becomes an ion. If you're having trouble with this, I recommend rewatching this video, maybe reading it in your book to get it clear. Uh, there's other ways to think about this um, that are a little more complicated for students at this level. Uh, if you're having trouble, please come and see me or go and see the Academic Success Center, talk to them, get this stuff straightened out. It's really not hard, but it is kind of fundamental. What is the formula for the following? So now I'm giving you the names of the atoms that I want you to make ions with. Now go ahead and take these and make ions with these atom names. Pause the video. Come on back when you're done. All right, welcome back. So sulfur. Sulfur is S. Sulfur is in group 16. So it's minus, or sorry, not minus. It's 2 minus. It's 2 minus. It's 2 away from its near, nearest noble gas, which would be argon. Calcium is positive 2. Ah, sorry about that. Bad habit. It's 2 positive. There we go. Sodium is plus, And nitrogen is 3 minus. Now, let's talk about how I knew this, if you didn't get it. Sulfur is in group 16. It's 2 away from group 18. So all you have to do is, if you want, if you want to do math, is subtract 16 from 18. You get negative 2. Calcium is in group 2. All group 2 metals want to lose their two valence electrons, so calcium will be plus, uh, 2 plus. Sodium. Sodium is in group 1. Sodium wants to be positive 1. Nitrogen. Nitrogen is in group 15. Group 15 is 3 away from its nearest noble gas, which would be neon. So that means it has to gain 3 electrons to have a noble gas configuration, to be isoelectric to its nearest noble, ga nearest noble gas. Nitrogen will be negative, uh, 3 negative, if it forms a charge. Now here is a table of all the polyatomic ions. Whew, it's a lot. There's a lot of polyatomic ions out there, guys. Now luckily for you, you have me as a professor. I just give you this table on exams. You don't have to memorize this table. However, you do have to know how to use it. So don't uh, wait till the day of the exam to familiarize yourself with how to use this table. Uh, make sure you understand this table before you get there so that when you're using it, you can use it quickly. Naming ions. Ooh, 
tough category, tough category. But you know what? You already know the rules, believe it or not. If I wrote this on the on the whiteboard in the classroom, everybody in that room would say sodium chloride. Everybody would say it. It's table. It's salt. It's not table salt. It's kosher salt. Uh, table salt has uh, potassium iodide stuck in it. But there you go. We all knew it was sodium chloride. We've all heard of sodium chloride. So there's all the rules for naming ions right there and naming ionic compounds, to believe it or not. Notice, sodium is Na plus, chlorine is NaCl minus. Well, notice, sodium didn't change its name, did it? It's still called sodium. So, the, so that means that metals don't change their names. Or, to say it a different way, cations don't change names. Notice, though, chlorine changed its name. It is now, it's now chloride. Chloride. Well, it doesn't say chloride on the periodic table. It says chlorine. Oh, so anions must change their names. They go from chlorine to chloride. Oh, okay. So anions have to change their names. So chlorine becomes chloride. Fluorine becomes fluoride. Bromine becomes bromide. Iodine becomes iodide. Um, oxygen becomes oxide. Sulfur, sulfide. Selenium, selenide. Nitrogen, nitride. Phosphorus, phosphide. If they become anions, they change their names. Cations, they're usually metals, do not change their names. They just, the, the name on the periodic table, is the name you use. Okay. Now, polyatomic ions names, they usually end in eight. You can just look those up in the chart. I'm not going to make you memorize that. Just look them up in the table. It's going to be on your exam. Not a big deal. Name the following ions. Well, okay. This one here we look up in the chart. That's ammonium. Ammonium. Lithium. It's a cation, so it doesn't change its name. This is sulfide. It's an anion, so it has to change its name. That's bromide. Notice how they change their name to the IDE if they're anions. And that's a polyatomic, that's nitrate. You'd look that one up on the table, you look that one up on the table, and you'll be good to go. All right, so that's pretty simple. I think everyone kind of got that. Oops. Let's go to the next slide. There we go. You try. So you get the uh, polyatomic table, get out your periodic table, try to figure out the names of these ions. Pause the video, come on back. All right, welcome back. This is called hydrogen carbonate. AKA bicarbonate. Look it up on the uh, polyatomic chart that I gave you. This is a cation, so it's not going to change its name. Sodium. That's oxygen with a negative charge, negative two charge actually, so it's going to be oxide. That's going to be chloride. Phosphate. And that's going to be calcium. And that's how you do it. Now, if you didn't get those right, I went through that kind of fast because I'm sure most of you got it right. If you didn't get it right, go back and rewatch the video. Kind of, kind of try to figure it out again. It's really not hard, but you just have to kind of learn it. And if you haven't learned it yet, go back and rewatch the video and uh, try again. It's not hard. You can do it. All right, guys. So we'll stop the video there at 3.3, uh, electron give and take. We'll come back with another video to talk about that soon. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was very helpful, and I wish you good luck and good chemistry.